Hi friends, this is Tina and welcome to my new video. In today's video, we are of course going to be setting up my new theme for the month of May and I'm really excited to show you all of the spring flowers that I painted in this theme. I just want to say that I know that this video might come out a little bit later than usually and if it does, I'm really sorry about that. I had COVID last week and that made me start filming this video much later than usually, but I think I still got it done on time pretty well and I'm totally fine now. I don't have any symptoms anymore except like a little bit of a cough, so <laughs> that's fine. But we're starting with my cover page now as always and as you can see I'm just now gluing in this rectangle piece of a craft paper onto my cover page. I know I've been using a lot of craft paper recently so I'm really sorry if you're bored of that. But that definitely has been a really easy thing to add to my theme lately and I've definitely wanted to stay more or less in my comfort zone lately so <laughs> it has worked fine. After I glued in the piece of paper, I took my 005 Pigma Micron and I started making this lace scalloped pattern on the edges of that paper. This is actually a part that I didn't plan on doing at all before this. I just thought that this might look good with some kind of frame to it. So I ended up doing that scalloped edge and I actually really like how it looks. It looks really dainty and um, really thin with that um, 005 nib and I'm really happy that I ended up going for that because I think think it definitely just made this look a little bit more interesting. After that I took my pencil and I started uh, sketching the actual flowers on top. So yeah, my theme for this month is flowers. I asked for theme recommendations on my last um, April Plan With Me video and many people said um, flowers <laughs> and it makes a lot of sense but I honestly thought that I would get more of these like really specific uh, niche recommendations but many people just said flowers which makes a lot of sense so I ended up going with flowers for May. I was thinking about what kind of flowers I could paint on top of that brown craft paper in a way that they still look really good and they pop from that background paper. So I ended up going for snowdrops for my cover page because I thought that white color of the flowers and the vibrant green of the leaves would really pop from that paper and it would still look really good. So I ended up going for that and yeah, I was thinking about like daffodils too and like some uh, wood anemones. but. I just thought that maybe this white flower just looks the best and I also really love the look of snowdrops in general. They look really interesting and they have a really nice petals so yeah that was a good choice in my opinion. So yeah, I mixed in a couple of green colors and yellow and black and brown. I just mixed a lot of colors in and I created this nice like uh, vibrant but still a little bit nice and muted green color for the leaves. And every time that you're painting on a non-white piece of paper, of course the colors look really different there than just like white paper. So I really needed to, you know, mix some more colors just to see how the colors look like on top of this brown paper and I'm really happy with the result. So yeah, first I just painted those leaves with one color and then I mixed a lot of black and brown to that color to make this more uh, dark and shadowy tone for the leaves as well. And I pretty much just added that color on the bottom of the leaves and also to some parts that were underneath some other leaves and flowers so that, you know, the shadows would look more or less correct. And um, I actually didn't really find it hard to paint on top of this paper, I thought that that might be a problem but it wasn't. I was able to blend the colors together pretty nicely. Of course like if I would have gone for like a really <laughs> nice gradient or something like that maybe then I wouldn't have a um, as good of a result but here when I was just painting those little leaves and just blending the colors together a little bit I didn't see any issues. So yeah, when I added that darker shade, I really just 
took a damp brush and blended those colors together a little bit better so it will look good and that was pretty much it for the leaves uh, this far and now I'm adding the last detail for the leaves and I think this definitely made the biggest difference so I just took this like white or almost white really light green color and I just pretty much um, outlined some of the tops of the leaves with that to create this like really glistening look to the leaves and yeah I really like how it looks in the end and that definitely made them look much more interesting one of the other reasons why I decided to paint uh, snow traps was that I've been sharing a lot of um, pictures of flowers in my Instagram stories lately. If you follow me on my Instagram, you might have seen <laughs> many of them already. But uh, throughout April, I've been really like fascinated uh, seeing flowers again because of course we just had snow, we just had winter. <laughs> so, you know, seeing flowers blooming and finding them everywhere and seeing, you know, how they start blooming from just like... Like seeing the first little bulbs of color coming from the ground and suddenly seeing a lot of different like beautiful opened petals it's really exciting so yeah I've been sharing those flower pictures on my stories and I've also seen some snow drops this is probably like the first time at least that I've really like noticed them ever before so I've really been fascinated with that flower especially because it's so pretty and it's so interesting and I love how it's white instead of like really um, vibrant color so so yeah, it was it has been really nice and um, that definitely inspired me to paint them. I've also seen many other different kinds of flowers, but I just again thought that this works better with the color scheme that I was going for and I really am happy that I chose this flower because I love the pop of white color against that brown background. But yeah, I of course painted the petals white and then with uh, brown and black mixed into some white, I just made some shadows for the petals and I made them pop really nicely. And I think this turned out really pretty. I really love this color scheme and this illustration on top of that paper. I'm really happy that I ended up going with this. I have to say that I really didn't have any sort of plan when I started working on this theme. I was really struggling finding a theme for like May that I was really interested in. I knew that I was going to be making flowers, but I just didn't know what kind of theme I wanted to go for with that idea in mind. But I'm really happy that I got there in the end for sure. So the next part of this cover page was making my header for May and uh, if you have watched any of my recent plan with me videos you know that I've been just stamping my headers most of the time so I thought that maybe just to show you some fun lettering too I wanted to draw some letters instead so I just chose this like typewriter font and I used my Pigma Micron in uh, 005 again to make those really dainty and loose letters underneath that painting that we just did but yeah I think that typewriter font is really fun one and it worked really well with this um, painting and the color scheme as well and after that was done I went to the page next to it because this is going to be my calendar spread my white pen again was not really working well with me it was a struggle but it's fine <laughs> I just made this grid on top of that same craft paper and then I added these white dots on top for each day with my white pen and then I wrote the dates on top I tried to come up with different ways of making this page more interesting. I was thinking about like uh, gluing some pieces of colorful paper to the edges but it didn't really ever work and I'm kind of happy that I didn't add anything because I think it looks really nice and simplistic and minimalistic and all the colors and elements just go together like this. You don't have to really add anything. Thank you. 
I also stamped the days of the week on top of the grid calendar and then I started adding some little details onto the cover page just to finish this whole spread up. I tried to not add any type of like old book page paper into my setup this time because I know that I've been doing it so much recently but I just couldn't not use it because I thought that it works so perfectly as a little edge piece for the cover page so I ended up adding it there and in my other spread site also added it to the edges of the page it just looks really pretty <laughs> and another thing that I tried to avoid was using any kind of golden sparkles but I just couldn't avoid that either so I just added that onto the cover page a little bit and I'm really happy that I did I know I've been doing the same thing for many months now and just kind of I've done the same kind of style with my illustrations and with my themes but I, I love it what can I say <laughs> But yeah, that was my uh, cover page and I really love it. And now we are working on my trucker spread. And I was really struggling with, you know, figuring out a theme and a layout for this spread. I wanted to add some sort of painting element in this, but at the same time, I didn't really know what I wanted to do. So what I ended up doing was really inspired by Journal Away or Anna. Uh, she creates really beautiful themes every month. I will leave her socials down below, but she often does this like pattern um, painting elements. And I really love that. Like, you know, being able to add some really interesting decorations into your spread without really having to paint a full piece I guess so I wanted to try that out as well and I just included that craft paper onto the edge of the right side of the spread and then I just painted some leaves and flowers on top I have to say I love the idea but I don't necessarily love this pattern painting that I did. Um, I just wanted to create something really fast, something really loose and imperfect and just fun and you know something that just doesn't take that much time because I was in a hurry. So I ended up just doing this really loosely. I didn't uh, work on this for that long at all and I think with that it turned out fine. I don't hate the painting itself but I just don't maybe love the spread and the um, I don't know everything together just not my favorite but it's fine as you can see i just added some white flowers and some um light and darker colored leaves on top and yeah that's that <laughs> Just a couple of days ago, I got a confirmation about my new bullet journal being here soon because I was a little bit scared that it wouldn't arrive to me on time. And that itself really caused me to freak out because I started to think that the next month that I'm going to be setting up in this bullet journal is going to be the last one in this bullet journal, which means that pretty much in a month, I will need to start already working on my new bullet journal setup and a new notebook, which then again means that, that the last six months of this year are already almost here. Time is flying by so fast and that's making me scared. I don't know. I just needed to share that. <laughs> I also added those like album covers on top of that because this is going to be my playlist and then I just added some songs and wrote the names of them on to the left side. And that is it for my um, playlist page. That is really simple but I also really liked the fact that I ended up adding some sort of painting element and something more interesting in the spread as well even though it's not my favorite um, page that I've ever done. But after that, I started working on my trucker page on the left side and I just stamped the word truckers on top of that. I still cannot completely um, just not use my, <laughs> my stamps, even though I didn't use them in my cover page. I love my stamps and I've loved how much easier it has made my whole setup process. <laughs> So in this spread, I also added that same old book page uh, paper onto the left side of the spread. Again, I just really liked how it looked in the edges of my pages. So nice. But yeah, then I started working on the trackers itself. So I'm tracking my habits in this page. So I've done the same thing for 
many times now so i just cut out this rectangle from the craft paper and i also cut out a um, mini calendar from the same paper as you know my pages of the notebook are uh, i usually use my like cutouts from my dutch door weeklies to make them and then i just added my grid on top of them and yeah this is a really simple way of making your truckers look a little bit more interesting by just having that like background little rectangle for all of those mini calendars and then I wrote the habit headers on top of those calendars. Yeah, I'm really trying to focus on my health this month. I feel like especially because I was sick for a week, that definitely like highlighted the fact that I should be doing some more exercise and like walking. So I really want to focus on that this month and I hope that works out. I was adding that like scalloped pattern underneath those like mini calendars and I don't know that was just a fun detail and I loved being able to add that you know little detail for some of my pages but I wish I would have used it more and like had a better plan with it I guess. <laughs> but that is it for my tracker spread and now we are setting up my content planner. I did it in an exact same way as last month pretty much. I really loved the way that I tracked my content planning things for April. So I wanted to go for the same kind of layout because it just works for me. So why should I change it? So I added that same uh, craft paper grid onto the right page as like my content calendar layout. And then I was just adding the dates and the days of the week there and on the left side of it I have my task list with all of the weeks of the month so I have written down the week number and I have a little space where I can write some week specific um, tasks I have for example if I want to post a video on YouTube and I don't have a special like date for that or a specific date for that yet I can just write it down for the tasks and that's fine. Of course, this spread doesn't work for everyone. You might not be a content creator, but uh, you can use a similar uh, layout for all of your school things or works, work projects or anything you need, really. And on the left page, I just have my content planning header and some spaces that I can, you know, work on my videos. I have five different sections for each video. So whatever videos I have that I want to post in May, I can just write the name of the video here and do some sort of like task list for that and write down whatever I need to remember for that, for example. I don't know. It's just a really nice um, free space for me to use for video planning and tracking. You might be able to see that I have a little flower sketched in the corner of this page, but I actually ended up not doing that. I kind of liked the minimalistic and simplistic look of the spread without any paintings, so I ended up not doing anything like that. So yeah, I also, I'm, I'm fine with that because of course it saves me a lot of time when I can just skip um, bigger decorations like that. <laughs> The only thing that I changed from the spread from last month and this month is that I made it a Dutch door spread and it was mainly because I just didn't feel like decorating multiple spreads. So I ended up just adding a little Dutch door here and the other side is my monthly goals and monthly summary page. So the next page is the monthly goals and monthly summary page. This is always a spread that I would love to use more. And when I do, I think it's very useful, but sometimes I just completely forget about it. And like a significant amount of days have already gone by and it's hard for me to start writing my goals then because of course, you know, I, I feel weird about like writing my goals when half of the month has gone by already. So like, mm, it's always a little bit hard to actually like I don't know, pause and get time for me to use this specific spread, but I would love to use it more for May. And I really hope that the um, different kind of layout that I chose for that and the different um, questions maybe inspire me to use it more, but you will see really it's, <laughs> it's something that will happen or not. 
As for the decorations on this bread, I didn't really do anything too interesting. I just made that like little golden border for that along with the scalloped um, lace pattern. And I did that mainly because it's a Dutch door and when you have that flap, you can see those edges of the spread on the other spread as well. So I of course didn't want to add my monthly goals header in a way that you could see it from the other side. So I just wanted to do some sort of distinction between those areas that are just for the spread and what you know you can see from the other spread as well if that makes any sort of sense <laughs> but yeah then I just added my headers and those questions that I can answer about my goals and summary at some point of the month but yeah that is it for the spread it is really simple really not much going on and that's totally fine <laughs> But now we are getting to the last spread that I'm going to be setting up in this video and it's of course my Dutch door weeklies. I ended up going with the exact same layout as last month pretty much. I loved having the Dutch door flaps at the top of the spread instead of at the bottom and having that decoration on the bottom as well just worked really well and I loved that look so yeah I ended up going for that and I again chose to paint more uh, snow drops on the decoration area because I just liked the white flowers against the um, brown craft paper so yeah, I added some little decorations in this whole spread for the edges of each of those like Dutch doors and the tabs. I ended up going for that brown craft paper edge. I really liked doing that in April, so I decided to do it again here. It just looked really pretty and it made the Dutch door flaps look much more interesting. I have to admit, I actually haven't really used my journal in a while. I mean, I started using my um, weeklies for April when I got sick because of course I just had a lot more time on my hands. So I ended up journaling a lot, which I really liked. But throughout the whole month of March and like the beginning of April, I did not use my bullet journal at all. I'm really sad that that happened again, but I feel like it's just, you know, it might just be like a natural occurrence that happens at the beginning of the year because the same thing Thing happened to me last year and um, of course this March I was just really busy because I was just working on my sketchbook pretty much the whole month so I don't know just sometimes things get in the way of you using your bullet journal but yeah like I said I, when I was sick I started using it much more and I started really getting excited about journaling so I guess it's coming back in a way but it definitely has been weird to not you know grab my journal at all for the longest times like I literally did not even touch it for the whole month of March so getting back to it now has felt really nice and uh, I especially really enjoyed that layout for my weekly spreads in April so I was really happy to do the same thing again and uh, whenever a thing works for me I'm happy to reuse it until I get absolutely like I absolutely start despising it you know doing that so many times like I sometimes you know of course it gets a little bit boring so I would love to know if you have noticed any type of pattern with the your journal or your bullet journal when it comes to like seasons like do you ever have repeating months each year that you don't use your journal as much because like I definitely have those times. Summer is also sometimes really hard for me to use my bullet journal but I of course hope that this summer would be different but at the same time I'm not really pressuring myself to use it more if I don't feel like using it that much like I might feel a little bit bad for not using it because I love the pages but at the same time if I don't use it that much it's probably for a good reason and I'm fine with that. <laughs> So yeah, as you can see, I painted the similar kind of snow drops on the bottom of the page. I really like how they look like. I like how the leaves are kind of also going to the other page as well. Looks much more interesting. But yeah, I'm really excited to start using the spread and I'm really happy with this whole theme in general. Again, like I said multiple times, I wasn't really like prepared to start filming or for this video. Like I didn't have a great plan of what I was supposed to start doing but I'm really happy that 
in the end it actually turned out this pretty and everything turned out so well again i would say that this theme definitely has a lot of similarities between my april theme as well i mean the color scheme is very different but similar style with me using the craft paper and the old book pages and the sparkles and the uh, stamped headers and things like that but anyway i'm still really happy with this theme and i hope you found it interesting as well I did the same thing here as I did last month. So I have basically six spreads in one and the four first spreads in that bunch of Dutch doors are meant for my weekly spreads. And then the fifth one is for like any brain dump or notes. So like, you know, that's a empty space for anything really. And then the last spread is for my memories. So throughout the month I can write down and like draw some like things to remember from this month. And yeah, I like to kind of include those two spreads in this like bunch of Dutch doors as well. So I don't need to make a separate spread for them in this notebook. As a last detail, I made my task list for the first Dutch door. I am making the rest for each of the Dutch door spreads on my own when the month goes by. But yeah, I'm really happy with this theme. And again, like I said, I really hope you liked it too. I'm just now going to flip through all of the pages that I made in this video. Thank you so much for joining me for another monthly setup video. I again really hope you liked it. If you did, don't forget to subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. Leave a like and leave a spring theme emoji down in the comments so I know you watched until the end. Thank you so much for watching and I hope to see you in my next video. Bye bye!